everybody welcome back to that car vlog channel if you don't already know my name is Andy and this is my 1994 Dodge Dakota SLT now for anybody who's watched my channel over the last year and a half you'll know that until now I had a 1996 Kia Sportage SUV about two weeks ago I actually went and traded that in on this thing so is it an upgrade or a downgrade well let's find out in this video I'll take you around it show you what's up with the particular truck that I got as well as talk about this first generation Dodge Dakota at, in general first off a little history lesson now once again this is the first generation Dodge Dakota pickup truck the in 1986 for the 87 model year Dodge introduced this as their mid-sized pickup truck to compete with the likes of the Chevy S10 and the Ford Ranger. Now this first generation spanned the model years 87 through 96. For 97 it was completely redesigned and has the more modern Dodge Ram front end look that you that most people might know. The front end that later were also brought us the first generation Dodge Durango. But this is a first generation Dodge Dakota. Now this is the facelifted edition. Starting in the 90s, they actually updated and facelifted the front end of these trucks. Up until that point, you had some sealed beam headlights here instead of these plastic, you know, style form headlights, different grill, that kind of thing. Also, up until 1990, you did not have the option of the extended cab truck. You just simply had a regular cab that cut off here and then your standard bed behind that. 90 was the first year for the extended cab. Now the first generation Dakota hosted a number of engine options from four cylinders to eight. For the 94 model year specifically, however, you had the options of a two and a half liter four cylinder cranking out in the neighborhood of 100 horsepower. Um, you could also get a 3.9 liter Magnum V6 producing right around 175. Or you could get this, the 5.2 liter Magnum V8 producing 225 horsepower. This engine is mated to a four-speed automatic transmission in the back and four-wheel drive and we'll talk about that a little later now this is a fuel injected engine I don't want the looks to make anyone think that it is carbureted under here is just the air cleaner you have a throttle body underneath now for my truck specifically to look under this engine bay it looks it looks well maintained I was informed that the previous owner had this truck for 20 years and so it was taken care of he towed with it and all kinds of things and it does look well maintained if we can see down here there's an extra shiny bit right about here I'm not gonna actually touch anything because it's very very hot brand new looking water pump new looking serpentine belt so I do think that this thing was maintained the battery is only about three years old um, I don't know how good interstate batteries are. I've had a Dura last that was nine years old once that, when it finally went out. So here's hoping that lasts a little while. But all the fluids checked out fine, including the antifreeze, oil, transmission fluid. In fact, I think the tranny fluid might be a little bit too high, um, just from what I can feel in the transmission. But really, otherwise, it seems like a solid running truck. I did have one hiccup and I'll kind of get in and discuss my personal issues with the truck that I've had for the past two weeks in a little bit. But that is a 5.2 liter Magnum V8 that powers this truck. Let's hop on in the inside. As we make our way inside, we'll first talk about the door panels on the way in. So nothing much to say about them. You've got your door panel, a little bit of fabric up here, your speaker grill down here. Now these trucks did have power windows and much like a lot of the late 80s, early 90s trucks that did have power locks and windows, you can see unlike other cars where there's 
they're mounted like this on an armrest or something. They're just flat up against the door. Very simple though. Just like with the turn signals, one close to you is the driver's side and the other one is the passenger side and these are your locks. Now we come across the dashboard here. Have a fairly simple gauge layout, nothing really special. I do like that it gives you the entire host of gauges that you should have for every car. Your tack, your speedo, fuel, battery, oil pressure, and a temperature gauge. Over here we have the tilt wheel control, which is a little higher mounted than I'm used to in cars. Turn signal lever, and of course your gear selector right up here. Please excuse my camera not letting enough light in. On the steering wheel. 94 was the first year that the Dakota was offered with an airbag for the driver's side. Still nothing on the passenger side, but they did have it for the driver. On either side of that, you have a big round button, which is your horn. Now, I've heard other YouTubers say, and I don't know how true it is, but I'm guessing it is, that around this time, airbags were really just coming into their, into their peak and they hadn't really figured out what to do about the horn situation in the middle of the steering wheel yet. So a lot of manufacturers in this period put their horn buttons on either side. Down here, the truck does have cruise control and it's kind of a wild way of working it. First of all, you get all your buttons lined up in a row. Your on and off switches are kind of like pop-up buttons. You push here, clicks into place, push off, and the on button pops back out. Then you have your usual accelerators, settings, coasting, that kind of thing. Over here we have air conditioning and in this particular truck it does work. Like the AC button here, it's not a light, but when you push it a little blue piece just kind of appears in this little window to let you know you've activated the air, the, the compressor. Kind of, kind of interesting, kind of neat. Off to that, most vehicles of this time period had a cigarette lighter and this one actually does work so that's really cool it look appears to me to be the 94 cigarette lighter the way it just kind of blends in with the with the trim when you put it back in that'd be kind of cool down here this is actually the factory chrysler stereo that went with this truck and obviously most other chrysler dodge models of the time you have a comma switch for volume and power Here's your tuner. You got these little, little dials behind the big dials that adjust your, your balance and your fade. Five presets and something that the current generation probably doesn't even know about. A cassette player. How do you like that? Well, it's a clock that you have to set with an ink pen. These two little buttons right here. So it's been a while since I've had a car with a cassette player. That's kind of neat-ish. Eventually I might put a CD player in it, but it's kind of cool to see this truck still has its radio. Over here on the passenger side, you got this little bit of trim here that says Dakota on it. But this is not just a piece of trim. If I pull out on that, I have cup holders. And they're alright, they're pretty sturdy. They hold a 32 ounce drink. However... The big problem is if it's not a styrofoam cup or if it's a cup that's going to sweat and you've got a passenger sitting here, their legs are getting gripped on. Down below we have our glove box, just turned open. And it's really an interesting glove box in that the door is a completely separate piece. It's not a combination door and glove compartment. All your storage is in here. It's not very deep at all. Everything sits up in here, and then this door just kind of swings into place in front of it. A little bit of encouragement to get that close, too. Uh, I, I love the dash in these first-gen Dakotas because it's just so 90s pickup truck. You know, they try to get a little bit luxurious with it, and so they put in this wood grain trim just all over the place, this fake wood grain trim all the way across and I swear I wish this camera would let in more light I don't know what it's doing there see wood grain trim all the way across the 
it kind of breaks for a second and then it starts over here. Also, you get some of the absolute smallest air vents I've ever seen in a car, personally. That's just the whole thing covered up with my hand. Very crazy. Now, a really weird placement in this truck. It has an overdrive, overdrive kill switch, which most, most vehicles with an automatic transmission have had up until recently that I'm aware of. Now, some of them have it attached to the end of the gear selector. Some of them have it if it's down here, if it's a floor mount, it's attached to it. It's, it's usually attached, but over here, they've put the overdrive kill switch way over here. So when, so if I turn the key on, let me start it. First of all, you get an annoying chime, which eventually goes away. Turn the key on, I push this button, it lights up to tell you that overdrive is off. Push it again, harder, light goes away, overdrive is back on. That's just that top gear in the transmission. And I was just talking about how cool it is to have the factory radio still in this thing, and now it's gone all wonky on me. Well, it was. There it goes. It just took it a second. I think this radio might actually be going crazy. It might be time to replace. Also, we'll note on the interior, this thing has power windows, power locks, but it has manual side view mirrors. Luckily, you don't have to reach out and push on these. It has a little joystick. So I can just go up and down and up and down, side to side and move it all around. Do, 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 do. And it's got the same over there. Lighting's bad, but it's got the same over there. So I can sort of reach it or have a passenger dude if I have one. And now I have to adjust my mirror back. Hang it. If we look at it from the side here, looking at the seating, we have these just plain old bucket seats. It's actually a 60-40 split bench with a 60% on the driver's side. You do actually technically have seating for six people in this truck. Although three of them got to be pretty small. I'll get to that in a second. When we come here, we got this middle seat, fold down armrest, which is all that it is. It does not house a console or anything like that. I have a lever here for tilting the seat forward. This lever here is a primitive type of lumbar support. I also love down here on the door sill, while we're talking about the side of the truck, the door sill plate that right down here quality engineered Chrysler Corporation it's kind of funny they put that down there I normally use for tilting the seat back I think the mechanisms on both seats are messed up because I can just freely tip this seat back and forth no problem now there is a second lever back here right here which I assume is for rear passengers to be able to tip the seat forward if they need to do it themselves let me slide the seat forward there we go. Give me a little more access to show you more. Back here we do have a bench seat that supposedly can seat three. And I believe you could do that if they were four foot or less. If they were very small adults or children. But we do have a bench seat back here. Is a seat back. And I like how it kind of wraps around the side of the cab. Almost, almost seamlessly. There's a seam there though. I'm trying to give you a little bit of comfort back here. Now, underneath the rear bench seat, if we flip that up, we can flip up both sides, actually. We have storage compartments. Now, on the driver's side, I've actually already put this one to use. I've got some tie-downs in there, my ratchet strap, bungee cords, that kind of thing. Those just slide closed. Now, these actually will not stay up on their own. They have no way to hold themselves up. If they ever did, I don't know, but these won't. Now, on this side, if we open it up, we got our jack and tire tools and stuff. Really nice to see that 25 years later, it, that stuff is still in there. We'll put those back down. Also back here, we have pop-out rear windows, much like a minivan. So if your rear passengers want to get air, you just 
push that window out and now they got a little bit of a ventilation back there push that back in a latch it we also have a sliding rear window not uncommon on pickup trucks in general dome lights all the way back here I don't really like that now I do like the previous owner went ahead and put this extendable bar and hooked it to the coat rack hook coat hooks to hang stuff on kind of cool that's not a dodge option that's the previous owner now, like I said this truck appears to be been re reasonably taken care of but also well used the carpets are kind of dirty the headliner sagging it's got some rips and tears in it but it is a 25 year old pickup truck and it was worked it's very obvious you know the headliner coming down here I don't know what the heck that blue is on the uh, on the visor there. That's kind of interesting. Now you do have a passenger side mirror with a sliding cover. Your passengers can look themselves. Driver side simply has four wheel drive instructions. Speaking of four wheel drive instructions, down here on the floor you have a floor mounted manual four wheel drive selector. Now in the 90s, they were starting to get around to using electronics for selecting the four wheel drive. I actually had a couple of 93 Explorers that had push buttons right about here to select the, uh, the four wheel drive and the low range. But this has the lever. It's very rare to find this lever in trucks nowadays. The only thing I've seen so far is in the new Ram Power Wagons. I still see this. I think this is really cool. Let me stick the key in. We'll get that annoying chime again. That annoying chime. Or not. Awesome. One thing I like is if I pull this thing back into four-wheel drive, I get a little light. It lights up a little light at the base of it. This says four-wheel drive. Push that back up into two because I don't need that right now. Above that we have an ashtray because once again it was the 90s that was still acceptable. That previous owner, I mentioned the previous owner did some towing with this thing. It's very obvious because there is a trailer brake module in here. Very interesting to see that and a mystery toggle switch. I've yet to be able to figure out what this thing does if it still does anything. But there's a mystery toggle switch underneath the dash. All right, so now I shall attempt to climb into this back seat. Now, I'm not the first one to do this, obviously. I've seen plenty of my other favorite YouTubers who try to climb in ridiculously small back seats. But I think I've got one thing going for them, for me, that they don't. And that is, I got fat. So let's see how this goes. Now, normally, I would just tilt the seat, slide it all the way forward. And then entering is actually not all that difficult, even for someone as large as myself. And I can actually pull the seat all the way back and sit back here. Now there's not a lot of room for your butt because it is a small bench, that's to be expected. However, in order for this to work, if I'm sitting on this side, the driver's gotta be like three or four foot tall or I need to be sitting behind a short passenger. So now what I'm going to do is something insanely, totally crazy. I'm going to attempt this without sliding the seat forward. Since I'm alone and no one here is here to slide the seat for me. See how this goes. Foot way up high. Ugh. That is not pleasant. I will say you that. That is not pleasant. But I'm in. I'm seated. My legs are right up against me. And there is no putting this seat back. This seat is not meant for adults, at least not large ones. It's meant for children. It's meant for carrying things that you don't want in the bed or you need to lock up or you just out of room you need to put it in the back seat. Maybe for your pets if they're not too big. But this is not a place for adults. And now for another unpleasant experience. I gotta get out of here. All right, now that that's over, let's talk exterior styling. Now again, this is an extended cab truck. It does have the six foot bed on it. 
I believe it's six foot. I like here, it's got these nice five spoke chrome wheels. These front ones are a little bit dirty. The backs are too, but not as bad. I haven't had chrome wheels in a while. That's kind of cool to have. Now I have these side steps. I don't know that they're factory, but I do know this. They're coming off here eventually because they're pretty much gone. This thing is crusty. And if you want to go off road, that's going to compromise ground clearance anyways. But that's coming off there because they're bad. Now pay no mind to the bad paint on this truck. It is 25 years old. It's probably been through a lot. The paint makes it look horrible, but this body is actually very straight. I do have some surface rust up here that I'll need to take care of eventually before it really becomes a problem. But really not a bad, not a problem. Uh, the previous owner put these tow hooks into the bed, the ones that pop in. And I'm assuming the previous owner is also going to put these rails on because these I'm pretty sure are not factory. I do like having this stuff though, it gives it a good look. And I've got tie downs. Now come around the back, there's our tail lights, kind of a three square setup. Except this is your tail and brake, this is just a reflector, you got your reverse. I do like that I have a tailgate mounted rear brake or third brake light which does still work despite the fact that this tailgate has been through it um, it's it's seen better days eventually I'll replace that but it does still operate perfectly and that's great now if we drop the tailgate down you see it is actually held up by cables a lot most modern trucks have cables now um, unlike my old 76 Chevy that I actually had two bars that folded up and didn't look like this ever. This has cables. Now somebody put a drop-in bed liner in this thing. I'm not crazy about those, but I'll run with it for a while. Down here on the tailgate, like many trucks of the day, it says Dodge all the way across in these letters that appear to possibly be a little bit reflective, which is kind of cool. Otherwise, it'd be really dumb to put red on red. I like this chrome step bumper. The way they uh, they put the Dodge, the Ram logo into the the step the steps. That's really kind of cool. Did it on both sides there. That's really the only time, other than on the wheels, that you see the Dodge, the Ram logo on here. Nice chrome step bumper. I had a towing package installed previously before me. Really awesome to have. Again, this truck did do a lot of towing. I find it ironic that there's also a bumper ball on there, but whatever. Now, there was something interesting about this truck when I noticed it had the towing package, the towing receiver. I wanted to see if it had trailer wiring, because it should. And I could not find it back there. And I searched, and I searched, and I searched. And finally, I found it. I'm going to come into the bed and pull back the bed liner. Maybe. There it is. If you look down in there, I hope you can see that little gray part. That is actually a plug for trailer wiring. So, whoever had this truck previously must have done some serious towing. Maybe they towed an RV with it. You know, uh, maybe a towed a camper. I shouldn't say an RV, but a camper with it maybe. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I mean this thing is set up to tow V8 engine. I really do like that Now there are some things that this thing is going to need One is exhaust This exhaust is well crusty to say the least I'm pretty sure yeah, I could just bend that and probably even break it off if I wanted to So this is going to need an exhaust job soon Yeah, I just totally broke that off The tailpipe is crusty the muffler has hole is riddled with holes it needs a new exhaust front to back really however it does still sound really good take a listen to this
So yeah, I don't know about you, but I think that still sounds pretty good for stock and full of holes. Can only imagine what that 5.2 liter V8 or 318 for those who still talk in cubic inches would sound with maybe some Flowmasters or um, Magnaflow. I know there's some new Magnaflows out there that are supposed to sound real, really good, and I heard them on a Camaro once. I may have to try them on this. I don't know. But I think it sounds good. So before we start up and drive, I'll show you the other crazy thing about this truck. It has a remote key fob for a pickup truck in 1994. Now, I can't get this thing to do anything, but it has it. And I keep it because I think it's cool. You have this giant key fob. I mean, this thing is huge. It's almost the size of the one for my wife's Chrysler Town & Country. And it has two buttons that are unlabeled. I don't know which one is locked. I don't know which one is unlocked. One's bigger, one's smaller. And when you press either one, you get the little LED that lights up. It's, I don't know, it's hilarious that this truck had it. Now I'll go to the ignition. Another little feature that I didn't point out before, this little ring here around the ignition was actually present on a lot of 90s and early 2000s Chrysler truck models, vans, Jeep, Cherokees, Grand Cherokees, Dakotas, Rams, that kind of thing. And it's really cool because at night when you open the doors, this thing will actually glow a greenish color so you know where your ignition is. I'll fire this thing up. And you get that annoying chime again. And, you know, buckle up for safety and laws and whatnot. Got for to drive and let's get it. Now this truck, to drive, it's, it's like driving a pickup truck if you can believe it. Now that 318, that 5.2 liter V8 up there, again it has 225 horsepower and it does have a relatively decent amount of acceleration. Now you're not setting any records, you're not even pulling as hard as most trucks nowadays do with a V8. Larger trucks go faster than this thing. But you can feel the power come on, you can feel it's there, and you know this truck is actually capable of quite a bit. Now I will say, I think the side view mirrors are a little small for my taste. They could be, I don't know, a couple inches bigger square. Um, I will also be putting a set of blind spot mirrors on them because I like being able to see my blind spot. But really, it's, it's just like driving a typical pickup truck. Now, it is funny to drive around see the wood trim in front of you, you know, and headliner dragging your head, but it is what it is. Now, this thing does have, it is a little bit squirrely, especially under hard acceleration. I've been underneath, and I think I need to do tie rods and ball joints and that kind of thing. Uh, but that's, still, that's something I could do myself. I've already got the equipment to do it because I've been doing it on a Chevy. So it shouldn't be a problem me doing, doing it myself on this thing either. Other than that, it really doesn't need a lot. I'm thinking of a tune-up. Um, you know, plugs, wires, find the fuel filter and replace it. A uh, new air filter, that kind of thing. It had a little bit of a hiccup last week when I went out to pick up the engine stand and stuff to do the engine work on my other truck where I came to a red light and it just completely shut down and I crank and I crank and I crank and it wouldn't start but if I held the gas down it would fire and just for a second like literally a second if that uh, but if I cranked it over and I held the gas and I held it down about halfway after it fired I could get it to rev and it was really really rough it wanted to sputter a lot while it was revving and after a few times of that it actually did smooth out and it cruised down the highway just fine and then it did it one time after that it hasn't done it to me today thankfully knock on wood even though it's fake and 
and that's an issue. That's a first. I went to press the accelerator and uh, the, trans the transmission lever kicked up into neutral. That could be the problem I had last week. I also had a problem it wanted to try to, I thought it might have been slipping and not wanting to engage and that might have been it right there. I think the training fluid is a little higher than it needs to be so I'll have to drain some of that out as well. Um, but really, so far it actually is a decent truck. I've run traction a few times. I've, I've hauled the, uh, the engine stand and then engine hoist in it. I've not had a lot of time to do a long-term review of it. But so far, I'm pretty happy with the truck. It seems to cruise down the highway okay. And it does have a four-speed automatic, so you definitely can tell that when you drive when it shifts. It's not going to be as efficient as something nowadays that has a five or six-speed. Well, even more but I think this will do do the trick it'll do just fine I traded the Kia for this because I needed a running truck and my Chevy's not gonna be up running anytime soon this thing has hundred and eighty seven thousand miles on it the Kia had about a hundred and thirty three thousand miles so yeah I've got about fifty four thousand more miles on this than on the Sportage. So now let's talk. Let's decide. Have I upgraded or have I downgraded? Well, upgrades. I have a pickup truck now. I can still carry myself, my wife, our son, maybe someone else in this truck, just like I did in the Kia. I have a V8 engine, it has more power, automatic transmission, I don't have to use a clutch in traffic. I have power windows that aren't broken, I have power locks, the other one had manual locks. So there's that. Downgrades, worse fuel economy, and it does have higher mileage, it's also two years older, it's a 94 which is two years before OBD2 was introduced for diagnostics. So in some ways I'd say I did upgrade, in some ways I'd say I downgraded. However, I feel the upgrades outweigh the downgrades. Um, but, I mean, like every old vehicle from the 90s, it does need some work here and there. Obviously, I didn't go into this expecting a pristine truck. I can't afford one of those, at least not yet, and there are some very beautiful trucks that I would love to have. But I think that this was a wise decision. I miss having a pickup truck that run. There's no way that I'm getting the Chevy running and on the road, road worthy, anytime soon. I just don't have the time and the money to, uh, to get it done, especially the time. So I'm glad I got this. I'll continue working on the Chevy and get it done as I can and updating and putting up videos of it. This is really nice to have, not only because of the running pickup truck, because, but because now if I need to haul something large for working on the Chevy, like an engine stand and hoist, I have this thing. And it runs, it starts up every time, and I can, hopefully I'll be able to rely on it. So, I think this was a wise choice. I don't know what you guys think, but I do. So, there you have it. That's my 1994 Dodge Dakota SLT. Hope you've at least someone enjoyed this video. Hopefully it wasn't too corny for you. Hopefully you were informed and entertained and didn't completely hate it. But if you did, you know what to do. Make sure to like the video, share it if you feel so inclined, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell. Make sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram at that Carvolic channel. I'll put up some pictures of this thing from time to time, maybe. More videos to come on the Chevy, hopefully soon. And also always remember, if you've got a car, if it's cool, rare, weird, new, you'd be willing to let me drive and review, hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Let me know if you're in the Knoxville surrounding area. You guys take care. We'll see you next time.